Angie. John. Do you have a book? Are you asking if I can read? No. Have you written a book? Oh, I'm thinking about it. Why have you? I'm, I'm writing one at the moment. I'm starting to think it's really important for coaches to have one. All right. I'm hooked. Let's talk about books today. Welcome to The Coaching Clinic with John and Angie, the show for professional coaches that explores the ins and outs of coaching, from working with clients to, to running and marketing your coaching business. If you're a professional coach who's committed to your own personal and professional growth, cares about making a difference, and wants to have a successful coaching business, you're in the right place. My name's John Ball. And I'm Angela Bezignano. Between us, we have over 50 years of coaching experience and best practices to share with you. From getting started to scaling up your business. We know what works and what doesn't, as well as what it really takes to have a successful and thriving coaching business. With new episodes every Wednesday. Make sure you're subscribed to get them fresh. Angie, it seems like everywhere I look at the moment, people are talking about how important it is to have your own book in, uh, for your business. If you are a coach, a speaker, or any, anything in the you know, personal development, I think information sector and personal development industry, that it's really important to have that. And, and it has got me thinking and it has got me revisiting a book that I've been looking at, but have, have you been feeling the same thing? So I'm going to make you last. I've been writing my book probably since 2016 and oh, wow. it didn't, yeah, it's been a long time. And why am I still writing it? I just haven't gone back to it because it didn't, I didn't start out with it. The idea wasn't to write a book. I started journaling. And as I was journaling at the time on this topic of what was going on in my life at the time, I started to realize that, wait a minute, I'm a coach, right? This could actually be useful, a tool, a guide for people. So I shifted it, but yes. So here I am though, all these years later, and I have still, I have not completed the book. Not yet. But what sort of stage is that at the moment? Then? So I probably have like a serious great three chapters. And it's not going to be a long book. This isn't going to be a 500 page novel, right? This is not that. But what I did do recently, because I do, and not just because I don't want to finish it just to finish it. But what I did do is I've actually outlined the last, the last six or seven chapters, like what I want to talk about in those. So I'm going from it being this natural, let me just get the thoughts on paper to organizing it like in a way that if I was a reader, it would actually make sense. So I'm treating it like a book, right? And mm. not just the journal. Okay. But have you reinvigorated your drive, your passion to, to move ahead with the book now? Yeah, because now it's in my, it's like part of my practice. Like it's part of my vision for my business because yeah. although it didn't, it wasn't born from, oh, let me write a book. That'll be great for my business. I can now turn it into that. I can take this other great idea, this content and turn it into. So I do have more passion because I actually think there's a lot of information that based on what I do every day is a great supplement to what I do. I guess I could say it that way. It's a great supplement to what I do every day, a great add on yeah. and who knows, it'll so actually many, sell. Look, so many people say that the best business card you can have is your own book. Mm. And I agree to, to a great degree. I feel like I've, I didn't say, have I run before? Yeah, but small, like really small guys. I've even self-published before, but really like handbooks, very more like pamphlets, but, <laughs> but not really related to what I do now. So I wouldn't probably wouldn't pull those things back. So right. I have published myself. I have written books, but, but now this is what I'm working on is a much fuller book that really is my whole framework and my whole philosophy principles around what I do and how that's going to help others as well. So I'm excited for it, but I will say that first time where, when I got somebody to take a look at my, my framework, the skeleton bare bones of the book mm -hmm. and they, their first comment to me was, this is four books. But, okay. He, yeah. Yeah. But then why not? Was, okay. That's actually not bad. So that makes my life a bit yeah. easier now to get that great feedback from someone who knows about these things and say, okay, it can be four books and this can be part one of those four books or maybe becomes three books, who knows, but, but not to really put too much 
into one book because that whole thing about talk about we're speaking we don't want to over teach we don't want to overdo it like, whilst we want to deliver value we want people to be able to absorb what they're delivering and to be able to use and apply it and something that ends up being a, like almost like a, a bible of presentation skills so to speak might be a bit overwhelming for a lot of people and maybe even hard to use i was gonna say i just was gonna say that i think that when there's too much information that it just what happens is the lessons get murky they get yeah. lost and i actually just had a session with somebody last night and i encouraged her right we we're having this conversation and i said to her maybe what you should do because it was about she was writing some things down and i said no i think that you need to break those things down i didn't say go write another book but it was interesting when that person said to you i have four bucks like this is four bucks right? Don't overcomplicate it because the lessons get lost. And sometimes we have to go back and revisit, right? That's, it's okay because when people, if we have one book and people want to come back and revisit, maybe it's a workshop. Maybe if, if you want there to be more tangibles, right? Maybe then you're creating a whole different type of curriculum around the book, which right. again, what are we doing here? We're expanding our business. And it's funny because I actually have two books going. It's, and it's, again, it's because to your point, and I didn't realize it and this just put light on, light on it, that the first book really was more, it should be, I should keep it where, it, what it was meant to be yeah. and then take specific topics that I touch on and turn those into more, right? Because yeah. there is more to learn. There is more to say. Yeah. I think it's so much more commonplace now to have a book then I don't know, 20 years ago, what do you think about that? Yeah, it really is. And I do think that probably self-publishing is so much easier now than it ever was that it almost doesn't make sense not to. And I have, I have a connection who's a really good marketing expert and he's turned out books. Like he'll spend three weeks working on a book and then self-publish it. And he's done okay with that. I mean, I've read some of the books. And yeah, they're lifted with spelling mistakes and things like that, but there's good content in there uh, and there's things that can be really helpful. So, you know, if you're willing to let go of that sort of, it needs to be perfect and all the syntax and spelling needs to be spot on. If you can let go of that to some degree, like, do you maybe want to spend a bit of money on an editor? Sure. Especially if you're looking to take the book into the, the mainstream and, and maybe take it to a publisher at some point, you may well want to do that. but Really, could you move ahead on a budget and maybe just self-publish something yourself? Absolutely. And I've, I've done it with smaller books and um, to some degree, I'll do that this, with this book as well, although I probably will um, at least spend a couple of hundred bucks on getting it, getting someone to take a look at it, quick, do a quick edit on it. Who has I some think professional it's important insight. to identify that for like the people listening, right? Because there might be people here listening to us right now saying self-publishing, what is that? I think mm -hmm. that there's not, it's not a natural place where people who are building coaching practices or in personal development necessarily say, oh, that's the goal as well. There's going to be these verticals within my business. And one of them is going to be my book writing. So tell us, tell our audience, right? What are really the big, and you touched on a little bit, but what, why would I, or why would I not self-publish specifically? Mm. Partly it's looking at the benefits of each one. Like we, we do want to get the clear pros and cons. When you go to a publisher's, if you have a good concept for a book and it has a very clear market and it's clearly commercial for them, then they will be able to do things like offer you an advance on the book and, and maybe they will be able to have better distribution than you might be able to manage by yourself. That doesn't mean that it's going to sell like hotcakes. It doesn't mean that it's going to be a successful book for you. And you know, the chances of you making any money with a properly published book, low. it's still going to be what we call a loss leader, that you're not really going to be able to make much money off it and unless you have a huge international success. But so few people have that. And... That probably speaks to you really need to be able to tap into whatever's like, guys, this is going on, whatever's hot right now, or people want to get into, 
And you need to be right there with what you do at the right time to some degree for that to mm. really work and, and to have a really solid strategy. When you go to a publisher, you have to go with a book proposal, first of all. You, could, you don't just go and throw your completed manuscript at them and say, here's my book. You have to give them a book proposal. And we're talking, we are talking non-fiction, particularly probably personal development and the likes of books. And so with that, you have to be clear on all the information they want from you in a book proposal. That can be almost as much work as writing your book. <laughs> so they want the outline, they want the clarity of who it's for, uh, what the book's going to do for the audience, all of these things. And you can usually get the, you can usually get all that information off publishers' websites to be able to sub, that what they want information from you for a book proposal. They don't mm. want to read your completed book. They want to read your proposal and, and see if it's any good from there. Part of the reason is they, uh, they actually do know a fair bit more about publishing styles and what works well and what doesn't. So they may ask you to make changes and that's much harder to do if you've mm. completed the book. They can sometimes, if they like the concept and, and they think it's got good commercial value they may well have someone work with you a bit on the structure and design and layout of the book to make sure that it's going to fit with what they already have in their library and with their audiences in the right way. So yeah, there's things there that could be beneficial to you. But yeah. for most coaches and speakers, self-publishing, and there's so many different options for this as well from just like essentially having a, a PDF version of your book that you can give yeah. to people. Or you know, self-printing, you can self-print your books and sell them at your own events. We talked about this with speaking. You can include them in part of, as part of your a negotiation for speaking events. You can use them as a calling card for clients, as a, an introductory offer to bring people, like a funnel to bring people in deeper into your coaching world that's pretty low entry. Because if someone can't even, you know, if someone's not even going to pay to have a book delivered to them, they're not going to pay for your coaching either. So if, but yeah, th these so, are yeah, some of the differences. It's that ancillary value to it for sure. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm going to sit here and say this to you because this, just like when we talked about podcasting, you've already felt published that so you're ahead of me. You've done it before me. But I feel like I would be speaking for maybe the entire audience that's listening when I ask this question. If we, because I feel like most people are going to want to monetize, right? You mentioned, oh, you mm -hmm. can bring it to an event and offer it and promote it that way and, and create this like collaboration and layers of what you're offering. And I think that's great. People love the stuff. Nobody wants to walk away with a pen with your website on it. That's like a real value. But if somebody really wanted to monetize a book because it's effort, it's not something we're necessarily going to be throwing together what's the, what, again, I'm sure there's a million perspectives on this. So I'm just asking John, by the way, in his, for, in his experience or in his opinion, what would be the best route for somebody to take? I'm certainly by no means an authority on this, but, but what I do know is when you self-publish, you are in control of your marketing. Yeah. When a book gets published through mainstream publishers, may get marketed the one time, but they do still expect you to primarily take care of the marketing strategy for that. And it's much like any information product. How do you sell any kind of information product? That's what a book is at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. How do you sell that? How do you market it? How do you promote it? You want to maybe build up your, e build up your email list and perhaps you're going to maybe even utilize buzz around, you know, start creating some buzz around the books to build that up. And going on, going on podcasts as a guest, we talked about that recently, You're going on talking about the book that's coming out and build up some interest there, maybe even create a waiting list for your book so that you can perhaps at least get onto an Amazon bestsellers list pretty quick. There are some pretty good resources out there to help you know how to best market your book. But the good thing with that is you can turn up the marketing, turn on the marketing tabs for your book anytime you want. And so I think right. if you actually want to make money from your book, great. You might just want it as a tool, uh, something you can sell at events and don't really care if it's in book charts or whatever, that's fine. But if you do at least want to um, get it onto an Amazon bestseller list, there are plenty of people 
um, who offer some great strategies for helping you to do that. And it's really not as difficult getting onto the Wall Street Journal, but New York Times Street Journal, bestseller. The New York Times yes. bestseller. Yeah. So that's a very different beast indeed mm -hmm. and requires a much more significant strategy. But again, there are people, you know, if that's your goal, there are people out there who could be able to help you do that. So it might depend on what level you're at. I certainly think the self-publishing route for most people is the easier path to go down. And there are so many different levels that like people will essentially some degree give you the whole strategy for doing this. There yeah. are some people who will do it along with you. And there are some people who will even take care of it all for you and maybe even ghostwrite your whole book for you. I was all just going to talk about ghostwriting. All of that. Like, yeah, because I feel like this. I feel like my perception of book writing, right? I wrote a small book in college. It was part of a class I was taking, little novelette, and it was great. A class, this was amazing. I had to share it with my colleagues because there was some mystery in there. Who knew? I just love to articulate and get things down. But it's so funny because my perception was in order to have a book published, you had to be an author, right? That was your profession. And right. that's just not true anymore. It has, that whole space has evolved, obviously, since I get to feel like a little bit of a mini dinosaur, right? Because I'm talking about a time when that was the truth. You had to be yeah. an author for, for the most part in order to get something published. And that's just not the case anymore. So it is another viable opportunity to do, get things done. If I had, listen, if I had three weeks, you were mentioning something about a friend of yours that knocked it out in three, three weeks. If somebody locked me in the cabin like Stephen King does, go lock me yeah. up somewhere. I could knock out the two books that I have probably like pretty quickly because I'd be having, I'd have the time and attention. And now because I am focusing on the writing. It's, I need a couple of hours of, this is why it hasn't been, why is it going on for so long? Why is it taking me so long? Because I don't feel like I've had the time because I have to get into this mental zone to create mm -hmm. what it is or to reflect on what it is I'm trying to say. Create a flow. It's not a 15 minute thing, unless it's just a quick idea. Oh, I wanna throw this in there. It can be time consuming, but I think it's you outline things and you really decide what it is you want to talk about. It will probably happen a little bit more quickly. But I just feel like, yes. the, and tell me, do you agree? I think that the mindset is that it used to be like you had to be an author, but yeah. you don't. And ghostwriting. Yeah. Somebody just like, I don't know, maybe the universe was talking to me. Somebody on LinkedIn was like, hey, I'm a ghostwriter. And I'm like, oh, maybe. I do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. What'd you say? I thought I don't believe in ghosts. Oh, he will. You come to my house and you will. That's all I'm going to say. What? What? Uh, what? But look, yeah, I, I know that there are people like with podcasts who have had somebody handed the transcripts of the podcast over to somebody to turn, have them turned into a book, formatted and turned into a book. And people have done that. And, and sometimes have done really well with that. So I know that is also an option. When, when I have nearly 200 episodes of my other show, that is an option. There's probably plenty of stuff in there that would make valuable book content and would mm. probably do very well. So that's another option for the future as well. But the whole point of having it in the first place is that expert positioning. Mm -hmm. and, and that, I think mean, that is, it's not just to make money from it. Hopefully you can make some money from your book as well. That's certainly a good right. thing to do. But for coaches more than anything, it does give you a level of expert positioning. You can say podcast does to some degree, but somehow it doesn't have the same gravitas as having a book published, even if sure. self-published it. I, I'm, I'm not sure that everybody even thinks that a book is something that might be necessary. And if it was, why? So it's not just always about monetizing. It is about that expert positioning. It's about completing the package, so to speak, and not necessarily a package that you're going to sell, but just another piece of what you're doing and your mission and your passion. I, I love it. I think it's a great idea to add it on. Here's what I'll say as well to add on to this. I don't think it's something for new coaches. I agree. Uh, unless you really have a specific like, 
point of view framework concept that is going to be really valuable to people and is, is your intellectual property. If you already have that, great. But I would probably still look to take some time to validate it in coaching mm -hmm. and to have the case studies and the history and the knowledge of working with it. This is one of the things that did come up for me. Like I had a, ended up having a, an interview on someone with my show. I'd mostly finished writing a book mm. and then had a professional ghostwriter come and be a guest on my show. She's written some great books. I think actually I will share her name's Ginny Carter and she's written a book called like your business, your book. I think she, her more recent one was like how to write a personal, how to write a self-help book. Great. She's really good, really knowledgeable on this stuff. Super nice person as well. And I'll put a link to that episode if you want to listen to it into the show notes as well. But one of the things she said that really hit home for me was like, you need to be able to demonstrate that this has been in action. Otherwise it's just kind of conceptual knowledge, which I think is really important. And it's one of the reasons why I held off on that particular book and thought I don't have enough validation in my work experience to be able to feel confident going ahead and publishing. Could you still go ahead and publish? Yes. But are you going to feel like you're on weaker ground if you do that? Probably I would have. Uh, so it felt like it would have been a little, you know, whilst I'm almost ready to push the button, I realized the book was probably only really half done and there was a, a lot that needed to still happen before it's ready to be published. So this is one of the reasons why it's like, it's a slightly higher level thing. And yes, there is a certain level of work and commitment involved in this. And you do need to figure out you know, the time isn't just going to appear to write your book. Sure. You do need to, you do need to create the time, whether you give yourself three weeks locked in a cabin or whether you give yourself an hour every morning or right. whether you join one of these groups that are around where that people get together and spend an hour on Zoom together, just writing on their books and have that check-in time. It, all of these things can help you, but it, ultimately, you know, done is, I would say done is better than perfect. Get your book done. If you have the idea and you really want to do it and you want to have a book as to represent you and your expertise and to give you that positioning, do it, get it done. Yeah. I think to your point about, yeah. You know, also, I think there's that, uh, if you're a newer coach, if it is a, just another distraction, you need to establish you and you might yeah. have some really great ideas on what a great book could be or a topic that you'd want to talk about. But I agree. I think that you probably need to get yourself into that space for a little bit to back up things a little bit more, depending on what the topic actually is. But also for me, when I think about productivity, is it a distraction? If you're a newer coach, there's a ton of things that you're working on and you don't even know yet what it is. You don't know what you don't know. And you and I, we've revamped recently. We've been coaches mm -hmm. for a long time. And even with all the experience, it's months. Like in my mind, I'm like, oh, I can just knock this out. It's months to structure or restructure. And right now, throwing the book into the mix is just not, it's not even on my list. It's just not. It's a is point it? of overwhelm, right? Yeah. If, if, if you let it be that. Yeah, I wouldn't encourage anyone to ever put themselves in that position of overwhelm. It's always the case that so you add it's always add one more thing, add one more thing. You do not need to be doing all the things at once. You sure. do need to figure out a logical order. And if your business isn't happening, maybe writing a book right now isn't your biggest priority. Maybe getting clients happening another way is a better priority to have. But maybe if you are looking to head on the road as a speaker, it might be a good idea to at least be working on your book. But maybe there's a middle ground as well. Perhaps start writing a blog. Maybe even yeah. start just recording some thoughts down, do some off the cuff, relaxed YouTube videos where you're just talking about these things. You'll start to figure out what you want to say and at least start finding your own voice. I like the idea of starting a blog, perhaps more if yes, people do still read blogs and, and newsletters and people do still like them as well. There's a huge market for them, bigger than big, still bigger than the podcast market. And it will help you learn how to write as well. If you don't already have that skill you'll get better at talking about it. You can, you'll get more comfortable explaining things, putting things down on paper and getting it out of your head. Yeah. It can help you to start to create your framework and your points and principles and whatever else you want to add in there. I agree. And I think to your point earlier, it doesn't have to be like everything right at the moment, but I also, I'm going to counter something that you said. I'm going to say that sometimes, because I love, I still blog. 
when I was blogging initially, it was really more random and it was just me getting to know me. I needed to know and understand my voice because coaching was one thing, speaking is another. And how I communicate with my audience, how do I do that? So I started the blogging piece because it was just little things that I had learned along the way. And I felt, let me talk about it. Let's see how this goes. And it might go really well. I, I got really good response from my blog, to be honest with you. It wasn't just because I was so important. It just started small and then started to snowball, which is what we want to have happen anyway. Your book is another way to communicate with your audience. It just is. And yeah. I think it's so funny because you and I both coached people who were like, I want to coach, I want to be a speaker and I want to be a this and a coach and I'm going to write a book. And I, what, what would you do yesterday? Oh, I was like, I was the CEO at such and such. And I'm yeah. like, okay, wait, let's take a step back. You're laughing because you know how many of those people we encountered. But yeah. you have to really remember that everything that you do to interact with the public is an interaction. And how you communicate, I think, is really important into to branding yourself and how you're received by the audience. Yeah. I think we do have to bring up the AI thing as well. Yeah. Because it is possible to use AI tools to potentially to write your book for you. I don't recommend that. I don't think AI is there yet. And I yeah, don't think, not yet. Yeah, and you would still want it to be at least trained on your voice and your style before you did that. But there would still be some work to do there. But you could probably at least get some help from AI tools on creating your outline, maybe even creating a book proposal if that's if you want to go mm. through a traditional publishing route. There, there are a lot of things where it can help shortcut or you can make sure that you're covering a topic fully. What are the things that you should make sure that you're covering when you're talking about this to make sure that you have exhausted the topic and not left anything important out? I think all that kind of stuff can really help you there. And so I would encourage you to use AI to some degree, you, whether it's ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever it is, but they're great tools, but I wouldn't ask them to do the whole thing for you. It's not there yet. Even if you had, even if you have the podcast transcripts and hand, they pump, pump all those into chat GPT or whatever, as they put them into a book format, yeah. I still wouldn't trust it. I still wouldn't trust yeah. it to do that at the moment. So, so yeah, use it as a tool to help you develop this. I would sure. say, hang on, other people may have different opinions to be on this, but right. I think it's a great thing to help you. It should be your author helper if you're going to do that rather than your right. ghostwriter. Yeah, no, I think when you mentioned that, when you're like, wait a minute, we don't want chat GPT to be writing everything. I had this flashback, but I, I did interact with somebody a short while ago who was like writing everything or creating everything through chat GPT. And I was like, I've been working with you with this, some, this is, and I asked, I'm like, are you using chat GPT or something like AI on the and they were like, yeah, isn't it fabulous? And I'm like, no, because I know you and I, it doesn't even sound like you do. And it, so I had to pull the plug on that a little bit with them and say, wait a minute, it's a great tool. Still need to be yeah. the human in the room. And I would say so. If yeah. You just, look, if you really just want to throw something out there and you're not too concerned, you just want something there, maybe give that a go and see what happens. But yeah, I, it wouldn't be the path that I would choose to take i think is yeah that's too much just trying to shortcut the system or, and and take right. any level of work out I of it agree. Like, i agree i could have ai write my blog for me but it's not going to be in my voice unless i at least start to train it in how i write and how i speak and communicate so plus yeah. you lose your ability i have to say something for me I, in my coaching practice and my speaking practice, like, i don't love i do not love administrative work let me just reiterate that for the nine thousandth time episode, what are we on, 37 today? But Something like that. The, what I love about being in business for myself is my ability to be creative, to bring myself into this industry or these industries, my ideas, even if it was like so funny, you know, somebody will hand me a recipe and we all know I love to cook, love to cook. I always have to make it my own. I have to. You know, I tweak, I look at the whole thing and say, hmm, that sounds good. I bet you this would be a great addition 
to that. Let me try it this way. And it's not because I have to be right or my way is better. It's my creative juices. So when mm. you're, and I'm not saying that I don't use it because I just started using AI for a couple of things and it has worked for me. I think it's great in the capacity in which I'm work, I'm using it. But I never want to lose my voice as the speaker, as a coach, as a personal development expert, because that's what makes me. That's where the that's where the connection to the people is really going to happen. And I'm guaranteeing yeah. there are naysayers out there that are going, AI can do that. It can learn you. It can learn anything. It's smarter than us. Yeah, it's supposed to be, but it's still never going to be Angie ever. So you yeah. don't want to lose that because as you are expanding and growing, it's good to be able to keep yourself present within your business. Just saying. There's part of this writing press as well. Like one of the reasons why I never looked at ghostwriters before was because I want it, I want my book, my content to be my words. I yeah. want it to come from me, through me. Yeah. And yeah. rather than just be perhaps editing or altering something that has been created by ChatGPT, that may be a personal preference that perhaps not everybody shares, but. That's where I stand with it. And I do think, it, I don't know, think it would be maybe 10 years into the future, which towards the end of 2024 right now, maybe 10 years in the future, someone's listening to this old episode of, of the coaching clinic and thinking, absolutely, but chat GPT does everything now. It knows my, knows my brain, knows where, you know, he knows where things will be with AI by that time, given how fast things tend to progress. But I and right, uh, right we should fully expect that AI is going to change the landscape of all the things, right? And I think that we've had, look at Pajetman, remember that cartoon from, I don't know, the 70s? Who knew that we would be having, there's George Jetson talking to his boss, whatever the guy's name was, on a TV. And that just seems so futuristic. And I think the only thing we haven't done yet, there was Rosie the maid, she was a robot. Now we have a ro robot that cleaned the floors for us. like. We don't know what we don't know yet, but for today, for sure, it's still nice to be a human and be creative and have our message put out there, right? Speaking our language in our way. I don't even know if I'd want to meet the robotic me. I have to be honest. I'm just saying, yeah. But, but here's the take I have with this. If you create a book with using artificial means and you and haven't written it, you're always going to know, I think there's always going to be that thing of you're not going to feel completely in integrity with it because you didn't actually create it. It didn't come from you. And so and unless it has been pulled from, if you've pumped in a load of previous blogs or podcast transcripts or whatever else, then that maybe there's an argument that it has then come from you. But you ha if you haven't actually been part of the creative process, I mean, you're all always going to feel like it wasn't really you that did this. It's just the... Uh, something there that, that speaks to what you speak to. I do think there's a personal integrity thing there and maybe even that sure. sort of a deeper connection and empathy that, you know, AI can perhaps emulate elements of that, but it's never going to do it the way you do it. It's never, we're never going to be able to connect human to human the way, no, artificial intelligence is never going to be able to do that. However good it gets, we're always going to know it's artificial intelligence. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do, I, I can see so many people thinking I can do this. I can make this happen. That'll make this, that'll shorten the journey for me. I would be careful about it. Anytime yeah. I can use AI on anything now, of course I go back and I rewatch or re-listen and then I go, mm, nope, that didn't work. Let me change this. Yeah. But it's not I a book. To, I spoke recently to someone who does have some expertise in AI, who was talking about AI hallucinations. And mm -hmm. they are a very real thing. This is through a networking program that I make. And one of the things she was saying with that is that it's a very real thing that it, it will, if it doesn't know something, it will create something that sounds good or that sounds realistic that may not actually be true. And this right. has happened a number of times to the point where it's given historical, historical events that never happened, <laughs> things like that, or uh, police arrests that never happened or never existed. Wow. Just data that it has actually created as a hallucination that isn't actually real. You do have to be really careful. So oh. the robots, you have to pull stuff. But all this stuff was, I think there is a degree to which we value something more. The IKEA effect, have you ever heard of that? We value something a lot more when we played a part in creating it. 
Oh, uh, and, and for a book or something that we've created them, like a, it's like it could be your baby to some degree, it's something you can create and put out into the world and it's going to help people. You're going to value it a lot more yourself if you have actually been the creator, the person who birthed the book. You know, I use that very intentionally because I know there are people out there who call themselves book midwives as sort of book coaches to get your book birthed and out into the world. Is is that even as an audience, there's a level to which I think we appreciate the effort that someone else has put into creating something as well. We value that too. So if we, I think if we suspect that someone has just pulled this together from chat GPT, we're going to, we're probably going to make some judgments on that as well. Whereas if we actually can be very clear that someone clearly has done some research and put a lot of effort and energy into this, they've pulled in case studies, they've done years of work in this area, that has a lot more effect and impact on people. Listen, I'm going to bring, and you're so right. And I, I was sitting here listening and I'm thinking back to my, my love of cooking and wanting to change a recipe. And I think it like relates specifically like that for me. If I serve a big dinner that I have, I've ordered in, I don't care. Like, I, of course, I'm happy everybody's eating and they're fed, but there's no pride in ownership, right? It's not my food. I didn't create it. I didn't cook it. I didn't plan it. However, when I, because I've had events where I have a food truck and it's like, oh my God, the food is so good. And I'm like, oh, that's great. I'm happy that they enjoy the food. However, yeah. I'm the one that's creating the meal and think of each part of the meal itself, right? As like a chapter, right? I created each of those. So when I set it out there, there is a different level of commitment to, is it good? What could be changed? Is this, how's it being received? And it's really the same for me. I don't know why it always goes back to recipes and cooking. But there's a different, it's just different. If I put yeah. somebody else's meatballs in front of you and you don't like them, I don't really care. But if I put my right. meatball in front of you, I'm like, wait. Who do your family appreciate more? Do they appreciate you more when you put all that care and effort into feeding them? Yeah. Or when you've just called up the delivery truck? Absolutely. Food is my love language. They know that. I make the favorite. They do the thing. And if I go and I order it, it is not the same. Not just in the flavor and the taste. It's how I, what the emphasis is how I feel. There's a pride that I, when I put a spread out, John said he's going to come and visit. So I can't wait to do that for him. But when I lay out that spread, AKA the book, there's just this pride. And I'll say there's nerves, but I'm always like, hey, I'm curious. So what do you think? I love the feedback. Oh, it was salty. It was this, or it was perfect. Don't change anything. So that's how I relate to it. Like you, it, there is definitely more pride in ownership instead of it just being like something that you churn out some way. I just don't, I don't go for it yet. And I'm probably not going to even be alive when all of this stuff can be done 100% for us. I don't think I'll be on the planet. I'm not overly concerned about it, but because it's up and coming, I do see so many people relying on Chad GPT to do the thinking for them. And that's just to maybe me. we'll be up, maybe we'll be uploaded into the cloud and we'll still be a hundred years from now doing our podcast. And... Oh my gosh. I don't even know what we would sound like. I think we'd be like in some type of educational system, like back in the day, this coaches and speakers made their living. Right, it would be more of a history podcast. Like it that certainly point. would um, be. But, but, uh, uh, but other than other than perhaps being new or maybe not being experienced enough in, in your area yet, uh, I can't really think of many other reasons why you might not want to write a book other than perhaps just you know, being focused on what actually really matters right now. Uh, I, I would say definitely good advice not to just add one more thing to you, probably what's already a very busy to-do sure. list when you, you are focused on growing a business. But if you're at a point where you think, I think I'm ready for this, it's going to help you probably get, if you haven't already got your frameworks and things like that figured out, it's probably going to help you with that and mm. give you some great content. If you are someone who's working for a coaching company looking to perhaps strike out solo, this could be a great way to help you clarify that kind of information and uh, and put things together so you know what you're going to be offering and the transformation, the clear transformation you're going to be able to offer to your audience. It could help you pull all that together, at least even if you just outline a book and, and not even get as far as writing it. I think that would give you a big advantage in moving forward. But Absolutely. For those, of you who, for those of you who are thinking about it, time to, time to get ready for it. Let us know. Commit to writing your book and let us know you're committing to. And 
and tell us what your book's going to be about. We'd love to, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. And probably the, one of the best, you can contact us on LinkedIn. You can find both of our LinkedIn profiles in the show notes, but you can also, you can also leave us a voicemail. You can go to www.speakpipe.com forward slash the coaching clinic podcast and leave us a voicemail and we will most likely feature you on the show. But I, we've, I think we've pretty much covered the topic. Yeah, I think you so. Say, Angie? Good information. And obviously we never, we're not looking to make this like into a whole like teaching moment. If you have those questions, definitely do. I've had several of you reach out to me privately. So I love that. Keep that coming or just get in touch with us the way that John just shared with you. I look forward to that. I love the feedback. Yeah, we love hearing from you. So have an amazing rest of your week, everybody. We'll be back next week with more great content for you. Hope your coaching businesses are growing and thriving. We will see you next time. Bye for now.